Today, we're doing something I've been dying to do since I got the new Yoder wood-fired pizza oven. We've got fresh basil, fresh mozzarella, fresh sauce, some olive oil. It can only be one thing. Let's get into it. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake, you're watching Roman Cook. Today on the channel, we're breaking out the Yoder pizza oven, and it's cook number four. We're doing a legitimate Napoleon-style pizza, complete with homemade dough. So we've got some fresh basil, we've got some fresh mozzarella I cut up. Now, for our sauce today, I even crushed my tomatoes by hand just so we get the traditional style flavor. We've got some olive oil. All we gotta do now is fire up our pit. And what we're gonna do here is I've got some Bear Mountain pecan pellets. Again, you can use whatever pellets you want. Doesn't really matter. I have a bunch of these, so that's what I'm using. We're gonna fire up our yoder. We're gonna turn our yoder all the way up to 550. That gives us an extra 50 degrees if we need it. I'm not sure what we're gonna end up at. I have not had it this high yet. This is cook number four on the pizza oven. As I said before, I'm taking you guys on along for the ride. I'm learning with you, showing you in real time. There's no practice runs or anything like that. But so far we've done a calzone, we've done a cast iron pizza, we've done a spatchcock chicken, and I figured it was time for a Napoleon style pizza. So once we've got a little bit of smoke here, we're gonna know that this is up again. The one thing I wanna stress about this guy, make sure you vacuum it between cooks, right? Cause if you don't, you're gonna end up with a lot of excess ash just being blown around. Obviously there's no diffuser plate there. It's wide open and again, it sits on that lip. So you can't move it over right any further. It catches on the same key that the diffuser plate uses, so you know it's in the right spot. We've got some smoke flowing, so now we're gonna let this preheat for about 25, 30 minutes. Get on my temp gun, we'll see if we wanna push it to 600. We may, just for fun, but we're gonna see how this pizza turns out. I'll bring it back when we're preheated. So while I was inside, I was thinking about my temperature and I decided, give the people what they want. I know you wanna see what happens when this rips at 600. So I turned it up to 600. We're only about 15 minutes into preheating right now. Uh, it's saying 6.04. We're gonna give it some more time to preheat. I wanna talk to you a little bit about our dough here. This is dough that I actually made last weekend, uh, except for we ended up having 40 mile an hour winds and I was no way I could film. So I actually proofed it till it was done and then I threw it in the freezer, let it freeze and then I put it in the Ziploc bags and I brought it out, put it back in this container yesterday, about 24 hours ago. I just let it sit in the fridge and set on the counter for an hour before now. So I'm not gonna do a, an in-depth dough making thing in this video, but I'll give you an idea of what I did here. So first off, I used the Polish method, which is 50-50 water and flour. And I used, I'm gonna put them up here so you can see them, but 400 grams of water, 400 grams of flour. I used two grams of active yeast, dry yeast, and I used five grams of honey. I then mixed all that up, let it sit in the fridge for about 20 hours. And then I mixed in another 100 grams of flour, 150 grams of water, and 20 grams of salt. I mixed all of that together and I actually, I kneaded it all by hand for about 15 minutes, covered it in plastic wrap, let it sit for 30 minutes, and then I put it back in the fridge. Double proof is what I ended up doing. What happens when you put it in the fridge overnight, number one, the, the poolish is gonna develop a whole bunch of flavor. If you do it again, you're just gonna get that much more flavor, right? If you've ever taken pizza dough and smelt it like after you, you made it, it doesn't, it's not quite as fragrant, but if you've tried to put it in the fridge overnight, the next day it smells delicious. Well, two days it smells even better. Uh, and then so once it, once it had sat for another 20 hours for the second time, I then cut it up and I made it in, into 250 gram dough balls. I let them rise for two hours until they were done. And then I put them in the freezer and you guys know the rest. So that's kind of how we got to here. I will do more of an in-depth video on making dough, uh, but this is all about the Yoder pizza oven. So I'm, I'm not gonna go into more detail than that, but I will show you. I made bread for a couple years, stopped. And when I got my pizza oven, I wanted to start getting back into it again. And dough 
pizza dough, there's a lot of different variations you can use, different flours. This is double O flour, um, but there's different techniques, different hydrations. And sometimes if you're gonna use an in, uh, internal oven, you wanna use some olive oil because that helps it cook easier. Out here, we're gonna be a higher temp, so I didn't use very much oil. There might've been, I don't know, maybe five grams of oil just while I used on my hands when I was working the dough a little bit. Uh, but other than that, I tried a couple pizza doughs and I wasn't thrilled with them. You guys saw one video on the pizza oven and it was a little flat. I actually let that overproof a little bit. But what I decided to do is I just broke down and I bought a pizza making course. Uh, you guys know them if you're into pizza at all. Uh, Vito Acapelli, can't pronounce his last name and I'm drawing a blank. I'll put a little picture of him up here. Guy's got almost 900,000 subscribers. He's passionate about pizza, but I have no relationship to him. He doesn't even know I'm making this video. However, I did find his pizza course very valuable, learned a lot in the process. So if you're into making pizzas, you might want to check it out. I'll leave a link down below. Been about 35 minutes. We're sitting at 642. Just to give you an idea, we'll get out our temp gun here. The top is sitting at 660, 682 on the inside. Still going hotter. <laughs> Time to get our pizza ready. I think we're hot enough. This is just double O flour in the bowl here, nothing else. And we're going to get a good amount of flour on each side. I just realized I put the cheese back inside in the fridge. So let's go get that real quick. Now the trick is here, you want to remember which is the top and which is the bottom. You can put a little bit of flour here. I'll move this out of the way so you guys can see a little bit, not too much. And so this is, this is my top right now. And we're going to push out, try and get some air around the outside. I'm trying to push all the air to the outside so we get that nice airy crust. Now we're going to flip it over. Again, push the rest of the air out to the outside. Get rid of our flour. A little hard on the wood board there. And we're just gonna stretch. If you got a little air bubble here, just pop it because it's just gonna burn. Now, basil wise, you got a couple options. You can put it underneath the cheese, you can Put it on top of the cheese. If you put it on top of the cheese in the oven, you've got to use a little bit of olive oil to keep it from burning, or you can just put it on at the end. I'm going to put it on at the end. Now, the one thing you can see with our pizza sauce here is because I took the tomatoes and broke them down by hand instead of blending them, I've got a little, little bit of nice texture in there, and that's probably a little too much sauce. We're already committed now. Couple pieces stuck together here. And now we can take a little bit of olive oil, drizzle it on top, like so. And it looks like I probably could have made my pizza a little bit bigger. Well, the one thing I'm gonna do, I actually have a pizza brush for my pizza oven. I'm gonna give this a quick brush. Just because you do get a little bit of ash buildup, especially when you're running that high. Get out our pizza peel here and just pinch. Almost like I know what I'm doing. And we're going to stretch it out one more time. Like I said, I should have made it a little bigger the first time before I put everything on it, but not too bad. I did not claim to be a pizza expert yet. <laughs> a couple little pieces of cheese, more cheese on here. That's it. In the oven we go. We're going to go pretty darn quickly with this thing. I'm going to let it go a minute and then I'm going to rotate it about a third. And I think it's going to be done in two and a half minutes or so. We'll see. Looking good already. Actually, not even any burn signs. I probably didn't have to rotate it yet. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to put it on a, a rack just to preserve some of the crispiness on the bottom while it cools for a few minutes. There's two minutes, let's have a look. Looking delicious. Give it a little turn here. 
Looks like I might have got a little heavy on the olive oil. There's a three minute mark, looking pretty good. I think I can get just a little bit more heat into it. Not much though. Maybe 30 seconds tops. I don't think it's gonna even take that long. Just give it an extra couple seconds near the top. Look at that guy. That, my friends, looks good. This is what we're going for. Nice crunchy crust, but airy. We're gonna give this a couple minutes to cool down. Unfortunately, the sun went over the house, so I'm staying in a little bit of darkness, but we don't have time to move things around. I want to try this pizza. I mean, look at that. If that's not a thing of beauty, I mean, I don't know. I would have never thought I would have ever seen something like this come out of a pellet grill. <laughs> oh, then cut that one piece. And apparently I'm terrible with using that thing. There we go. Look at our crust. Nice and soft on the inside, crunchy on the outside. The bottom's absolutely perfect. That's hands down the best pizza dough I've ever made. There's a plane going over. Let me eat this. Ooh. Got interrupted by a plane there. First and foremost, uh, shout out to Vito. I mean, I, I followed his dough step by step, watched it many times before I made the dough and kneaded it by hand just to make sure it was perfect. And the dough is phenomenal. Uh, but more importantly, so is this pizza. Absolutely friggin' delicious. You would never know this came out of a pellet grill. There's, there's just no way. Dough's perfect, texture's great, the bottom's great. We're able to get some of the nice fire sides to it. It's a winner. I, mean, I said this in my very first video, I actually messaged Yoder when I saw this was coming out. Uh, this is a game changer, it really is. This now takes versatility of your Yoder up like 10 notches, right? You can do chicken wings, you can do chicken, pizza, Detroit style pizza, bread. I mean, there's so many things you can do now that you've got this ability and the results speak for themselves. Like I said, no trial runs. First legitimate Napoleon style pizza I've done this guy. Turned out delicious. I'm shutting up because I'm gonna eat this. If you're not subscribed yet, do so below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Man, oh man.